It's GED question of the daytime, and I am working on getting caught up. I am so behind. Um, sorry if you've been waiting a while for this one, uh, but let's take a look. It says, what is the distance between point C and zero on the number line? I have to tell you I love this problem because it's... Uh, Looks like a simple little number line problem, but it's actually an application of an algebra concept you might have learned whether you realize it or not. Let's look at this phrase. Look at this phrase with me. What is the distance between point C and zero on the number line? That phrase that I just underlined right there, the distance between point C and zero on the number line is the definition for one of the terms we've learned. A number's distance from zero on a number line is called its absolute value. Its absolute value. Now the good news is whether or not you've ever sat in a class that talked about absolute value or you've ever heard anything about it, we can still figure out this problem. It's pretty easy to think about. We can look at C, we can look at zero, and we can ask ourselves, how much distance is that? How far away is C from zero on a number line? Now, I'll tell you the first mistake that most students make. Most students don't bother to look at any number line labeling. They just count tick marks and they go, oh look, one, two, three, it's three away or negative three away, they'll tell me one or the other, uh, but they'll tell me this number three. And if you just told me three, you would be mistaken. How do I know that? We'll take a look at this measurement here. From here to here on this number line is just one. Same thing back this way, if I go this way, this is zero to negative one. That's just one away. How can less, uh, um, amount that's less than one be three? Doesn't make any sense. So we've got to realize that if we're at some place less than one away, we're gonna start needing to use pieces and parts of numbers. Those whole number system is not gonna work for us. Now we have two ways to talk about pieces and parts of numbers. Um, uh, two common ways anyway. I suppose you could kind of count percentages in there too. But anyway, uh, two ways uh, that we first start out doing it. Decimals or fractions. And and you might say, well, which one should I use? Oh, I, I don't care. Um, whichever one works out for you. I actually think it's easier here to use fractions. Let me show you what I mean. A fraction is just breaking one whole thing into pieces. So take a look here. Do you agree with me that from zero to negative one would be one whole thing? Well, let's take a look at how many pieces my one whole thing is broken into. And I'd like to pick up some different colors so you can see the pieces. That's a piece. That's a piece. That's a piece. And that's a piece. And I wanted to put it in those different colors just so you could see that that one whole thing there has been broken into four pieces. Now you might be saying, Kate, Kate, but you went past my dot. Well, yeah, I did. But what I want to show you is that this one whole thing was broken into four pieces. Otherwise known, pieces or parts are the denominator of your fraction. It's been broken into fourths. The denominator of your fraction tells you how many pieces we broke our whole thing into. Okay, that is one way to um, think about fractions anyway, probably the easiest way for this situation. Now we can count how many of those pieces we actually have. That's the top of a fraction. Numerator, the word numerator means a counter. So let's count how many of these pieces we actually have. So starting at zero, I've got one, two, three of them, three out of four pieces on the way to one. I'm going to say that again. I have three out of the four pieces on the way to one. Great. So what is the distance between point C and zero on a number line? It's three fourths. Now I know what you're thinking. You're thinking, Kate, you're wrong. Kate, you've screwed up in your video again. You're always doing that. I'm going to stop watching your videos. That's not three fourths. That's negative three fourths. We're on the negative side. Um, I know that I do uh, misspeak a lot because I'm a flaky, flaky woman, but I haven't misspoken this time, guys. That was why I pointed out that relationship to absolute value. 
I didn't ask you what point am I at? Look at my language. I said, what is the distance between point C and zero on the number line? There is something so important that you have to understand about distance. Distance is always positive. Now, I know you're thinking, Kate, no, no, distance is not always positive. That's not true. Well, I'm going to give you an example. So I want you to imagine that you walk from your house to the store. How far did you walk? And you said, Kate, I walked a thousand feet. Okay, a thousand feet. So now if you go back and you walk in the opposite direction, you're going to walk home now. Did you just walk negative a thousand feet? Uh, so you would never tell me, Kate, I walked negative a thousand feet. Then I say, oh, let's combine your total total distance you went to the store. How much total did you walk today? If you walked to negative a thousand feet, you'd have to tell me, Kate, I, I didn't walk at all because a thousand plus negative a thousand equals zero. And so uh, me walking back home canceled out my walking. That doesn't even make sense. You and I know that no matter which direction you walked, you still walked a thousand feet. You didn't take away any walking. Okay, so the idea here is that distance is always positive. And so, yes, I stand by my positive three fourths answer. Okay, interesting question. Um, a lot of interesting implications. We had fractions on there, we had this concept of absolute value combined with the number line. Uh, lots of intricacies to this problem. So, if you have any questions, please drop them in the comments and I'll do my very best to answer them.